Welcome back. Now in the last video we were able to derive our expression for Euler's formula by using our Taylor series expansions. Now I mentioned that there's a bunch of different ways you can prove or derive Euler's formula. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to prove it by using calculus instead of our Taylor series. Now before we begin, I gotta say that this isn't really like the most rigorous of proofs that we're going to do but it's still fairly interesting, fairly handy to look at. So, let's get started. For our first proof, we're going to start off with the function e raised to the i times x. Now, this is a complex function. And we know that for the case of complex numbers, for complex numbers, we can separate them into a real part and an imaginary part. So we're going to assume that we can separate this complex function into two parts. A real function, denoted f of x, and an imaginary function, i times g of x. Now we don't know what f of x and g of x are, but in the course of this proof we're hopefully going to find out. Now, here we have one expression. And what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this expression in two ways and compare the results. So the first way we're going to do it is we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of the exponential function is just going to be itself. And then through the chain rule, we're going to multiply by the exponent and essentially multiply by an i. Now let's take the derivative on the right hand side and we're going to get that this is f prime of x plus i times g prime of x. Now that's one manipulation. Here we're going to go back to this expression here and we're going to manipulate it a different way. This time we're going to multiply both sides by our imaginary unit i. So we get i times e to the i x is equal to i times f of x plus i squared times g of x. Now we know that i squared is negative 1 so we can just say minus g of x. Now we have two expressions here. And if you notice, these two expressions are equal to the same thing, i times e to the i x. So by the transitive property, we, since we know that this is equal to i times e to the i x, and this is equal to i times e to the i x, then these two things on the right hand side must be equal to each other. So we can say that f prime of x plus i times g prime of x is equal to i times f of x minus g of x. Now here we have complex expressions on the left and right hand side. We have something with a real part and an imaginary part. And in order for these two expressions to be equal to each other, the real parts have to be equal to each other and the imaginary parts have to be equal to each other. So if we compare the real parts, we see that we get f prime of x is equal to minus g of x. And if we compare the imaginary parts, we get that i times g prime of x is equal to i times f of x. And before we, we can uh, drop the i on both sides, just to simplify it up a bit. So now we're left with two expressions that describe our functions f of x and g of x. And let's just see what they say. Starting off here, it says that if we have a function g of x, and we, if we take the derivative of it, we get another function, f of x. And what this says is if we take the derivative of that, we get our original function back, g of x, except this time multiplied by a minus sign. So essentially, if we have a function g of x, and if we take the derivative of it twice, we get the original function back with the addition, well, multiply by a minus sign. Now, this is fairly uncommon, because most functions, like polynomials, like let's just say f of x is equal to x squared, if you take the derivative of this twice, you're not going to get the original function back. So, we're going to find that the functions for which this does hold are sinusoidal functions. And we're going to find, I'm not going to really do it out here though, that this works if f of x is equal to cosine of x and g 
g of x is equal to sine of x. So we're able to figure out what our f of x and g of x are, and we can plug them in back up here. So we can say that e to the i times x is equal to cosine of x plus i times sine of x. So we're able to derive our Euler's formula without any mention of Taylor series. Now, let's just go on to the second proof. This proof is pretty much going to be like complementary to the first proof. We're going to do the same things. The thing, only thing, the only difference is we're going to start off from a different position. We're going to start off here with cosine x plus i times sine of x is equal to some function we don't know. We're just going to call it h of x. Now, here we have one expression, and like before, we're going to do two manipulations of it. We're first going to take the derivative of both sides, so derivative of cosine is minus sine of x. Derivative of i times sine, that's just going to be i times cosine of x. And the derivative of h of x, which is, we're just going to say is h prime of x. Now, you might be able to see where we're going with this. For the next manipulation, we're going to multiply the left and right hand side by i. So we're going to get i times cosine of x plus i squared times sine of x, or just negative 1 times sine of x, or just minus sine of x, is equal to i times h of x. Now, like before, we have two different expressions, and like before, the left-hand sides are equal. Here we have minus sine x plus i cosine x, and here we have minus sine x plus i cosine x. That means by the transitive property that these two things are equal. So we get that the derivative of h is equal to i times h of x. Now, let's just take a look at what this says. The derivative of one function we don't know is itself the original function multiplied by a constant. Now, what function do we know when we take the derivative of it, we get, it, we get the original function back? Well, the only function I know of for that is just e to the x. Now, since we're, when we take the derivative, we get an additional constant, that means we probably get a constant from the chain rule, which means our function is probably e to the uh, i times x. Now, on a brief aside, I know that this isn't really like the proper way, well, this is what we like to call a differential equation, and this isn't really like the proper way you solve a differential equation, but it's one to like hopefully show you the intuition of it. I really shouldn't say intuition, but uh, more of a shortcut, I should say. We'll be doing a bunch of differential equation videos, hopefully soon. But getting back to business, uh, here we found that h of x is equal to e to the i times x. So we can plug that in right back up here. And we can say that cosine of x plus i sine of x is equal to e to the i times x. So there we have it. We're once again able to prove our Euler's formula. And like before, we're able to prove it entirely with calculus and a little bit of differential equations, which we'll hopefully get to soon. But uh, in the next video, we're going to apply our Euler's formula and get back to working with complex numbers. So, see you in the next video.